In this video, I'm going to talk to you about different types of spondees that relate to the vertebral column. Typically, we've got degenerative changes that is known as a spondylosis. But think of the word first, okay? Spondy means the spine. So when you have a spondylosis, then it is going to be basically an osteoarthritis of that particular vertebra. In the lumbar spine, spondylosis tends to be around L4 and L5, and also L5 and S1. People who are 20, 30, don't generally get osteoarthritic changes. It tends to be more as a person gets older. And there's many reasons why that would be. So for instance, like the discs, they become dehydrated, so the space will get less. The facet joints around this sort of area where the blue is located. Okay, so this is like the facet joints here. So this would be the L4 facet around here. So this is the superior. And then if I take that off, then this would be the L5 superior facet that will articulate with, what have we got in here? Let me just bring this back in. There we go. Just trying to work that out then because one side is missing. So we've got the facet joint of L4 inferior facets. So a lot of time they can actually become deteriorated and degenerative and then cause a lot of pain because they tend to get bony spurs called the osteophytes. In the cervical spine, it tends to be more C4, C5, C5, C6, and C6 and C7. So typically three levels in the cervical spine and then in the lumbar, two levels. Now, if you have a spondylitis, then there is a particular condition called ankylosing spondylitis. And ankylose means to fuse, spondy is spine, and itis is inflammation. So we've got a spinal inflammation, eventually becomes a fusion. Typically, the person is male, more often than not. It's normally between the ages of 17 to 40, give or take. And it normally starts off in terms of pain in the bilateral sacroiliac joint. So the left and right SI joint is where it tends to start. Pain might not be the correct word. The young male tends to wake up every morning with a bilateral stiffness around the SI joint. And then after 20, 30 minutes, it tends to ease off. They don't really know why it's caused. Okay, so it's a disease process. And then they would have a blood test to confirm, and the blood test is known as a HLA, which is a human leukocyte antigen, B27. So then that would be the test, and it's around 90% positive for AS, or anchyspond, or medically known as ankylosing spondylitis. So it starts off in the SI joints, and slowly over time, it migrates and causes the long ligands, like the longitudinal ligaments, and the disc to slowly ossify. So as it progresses through the lumbar thorax cervical, it ends up looking like a bamboo spine. So the 23 discs become one fused bone. And when you have an x-ray, it looks like a bamboo shape. And it's through a process called enthesopathy. You might also get pain around the greater trochanter because that is like the enthesis on the bone. And maybe like an Achilles tendinopathy yeah, where it attaches. So it can have other issues and also an inflammatory issue with the eye as well. So ankylosing spondylitis is an inflammatory joint disease that eventually becomes a fused spine. Now, another two spondies will be a spondylolysis. Now, if I just take off, this is L4, and if you look here, you can see that is a fracture either side. And if you have an x-ray from the side, like an oblique x-ray, this is known as a spondylolysis. So the word lysis, okay, so a spondylolysis means a defect or a fracture, and it is to what we call the pars interarticularis, which is the anatomical area, in particular to the lumbar spine. Typical in fast bowlers, yeah, people where they do a lot of extension rotation, maybe wrestlers, gymnasts, and so on. But it tends to be in that uh, the male, if you like, yeah, who is uh, throw in a cricket ball because of that extension rotation and it loads the pars and it can cause a defect to it. If that's the case, then 
It can if you have a bilateral lolysis here, okay, then it can cause a vertebra to slip. And suddenly now we've got a what we call a spondylolisthesis. And a lysis means that we have a slippage. Typically, this would be L5, even though in this case it's L4, and then if it travels anteriorly, then it's graded. If you're looking at the vertebral body, so 25% of the anterior shift will be a grade one, 50% will be a grade two, and so on. If you're looking at it from an oblique angle here, all right, then it looks like the shape of a Scotty dog, like a little dog. So if you're looking at the shape, you've got his head, his neck, okay, so the body here, okay, the paws forward and so on. You can see it with a collar on. And then if we have a slippage, you can see that now, you know, think about it, okay, so the head's now come off along that sort of area, so you can see that. And then if it does, so that would be L5 spineless process, if it does slip, then it allows L4 to drop forward, and then you'll have what they call like a step. So when you palpate L5, you can step down onto L4. So what we've covered will be a condition called a spondylosis, which is a degenerative spine, spondylitis, which is an inflammatory spine. We've got a spondylolysis, which is a defect of the pars, and then if it causes a slippage, then that would be known as a spondylolysis. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and thank you for watching.